Good evening, I'm Paul Fraser and this is the latest news from Bahrain International. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace today His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa. His Majesty the King and their Royal Highnesses discussed local issues aiming to enhance the march of national action for the benefits of the Kingdom and its citizens. His Majesty expressed thanks and appreciation to their Royal Highnesses, the Prime Minister and the Crown Prince for their continued efforts which aim to develop the level of services provided to citizens and adopting initiatives to develop the national economy. His Majesty valued the efforts of all Bahrainis and their keenness to further develop the Kingdom, hailing the values of unity and solidarity demonstrated by Bahraini citizens. He added that hosting the joint meeting of the Ministers of Foreign Affairs of Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and Egypt reflects Bahrain's firm belief of the importance of cooperation and solidarity in this critical time. He also valued the results of the meeting which aim at preserving the security and stability of the country, highlighting the efforts exerted by the Foreign Ministers for the benefit of all people. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa also received in the presence of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, the Bahraini Ambassador to the United States, Sheikh Abdullah bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, after completing his work term. His Majesty expressed thanks to the Ambassador for his efforts during his diplomatic work term, which contributed to enhancing the historic relations between Bahrain and the United States, hailing the solid bilateral relations in various fields and wishing him success in his diplomatic duties. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa ratified and issued the Real Estate Sector's Regulatory Law 27 of 2017 after its approval by the Shura and Representatives Councils. The Law Decree 21 of 1976 that regulates the vacation of property dealership has been annulled as well as the provisions that regulate the ownership of apartments and tiers as per the articles from 814 to 843 of the Civil Law issued by Law Decree 19 of 2001. Law 28 of 2014 regarding property development has been annulled. This law supersedes any provisions that contradict the provisions of the associated law. The Prime Minister and each of the Ministers in their respective domain will implement this law which becomes effective on the first day after the elapse of six months from the date of its publication in the official Gazette. The provisions of the first chapter of this law become effective one month after its publication. His Majesty also ratified and issued Law 26 of 2017 regarding the use of medical technologies in artificial insemination and in vitro fertilization after its approval by the Shura and Representatives Councils. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations and good wishes to Morocco's King Mohammed VI on his country's celebration of His Majesty's Enthronement Day, wishing the Moroccan people more progress and prosperity under His Majesty's leadership and praising the two countries and people's fraternal bonds. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, sent a similar cable to Morocco's His Majesty King Mohammed VI on his country's celebration of His Majesty's Enthronement Day, wishing the Moroccan people more progress and prosperity under His Majesty's leadership and praising the two countries and people's fraternal bonds. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also sent a similar cable to Morocco's Prime Minister, Saad Eddin Al Othmani, on the occasion. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations and good wishes to Morocco's King Mohammed VI on his country's celebration of His Majesty's Enthronement Day, wishing the Moroccan people more progress and prosperity under His Majesty's leadership and praising the two countries and people's fraternal bonds. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received a number of officials from the Kingdom and from economic, media and journalistic events, as well as a number of citizens. His Royal Highness affirmed that development represents the priority of the current stage and that developing the service atmosphere is the interest of the government as much as it is of citizens, noting that government efforts are always focused on meeting the needs of villages. 
The Prime Minister stated that the policy of openness adopted by the government enhanced the investment and commercial cooperation with various countries and provided an opportunity for foreign investors. He stressed that the time to focus on development and progress has come. While reviewing the latest regional and international developments, His Royal Highness highlighted the national and Gulf support in countering terrorism. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received at Gudabiya Palace today the newly appointed Jordanian ambassador to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Rami Rechad. His Royal Highness affirmed that the deep-rooted historic relations between Bahrain and Jordan paved the way towards further cooperation and coordination in various fields. He also stressed the Kingdom's keenness on bolstering cooperation with Jordan. The Prime Minister wished the friendly country for the progress and success. He also reviewed with the Jordanian ambassador to the kingdom the latest regional and international developments, wishing the ambassador success in his diplomatic duties. Arikat expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his efforts to facilitate the ambassador's diplomatic work in the kingdom to bolster relations and fraternal cooperation.
Israel Highness, the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Gudebia Palace today the newly appointed Indonesian ambassador to Bahrain, Nur Shahrir Rajo. His Royal Highness hailed the development of bilateral relations between Bahrain and Indonesia, which reflects their solidarity. The Prime Minister affirmed the Kingdom's keenness to enhance cooperation and coordination with Indonesia in all sectors to achieve joint interests. His Royal Highness expressed hope to enhance understanding and expertise exchanged between the two countries, asserting the importance of enhancing commercial, economic and investment cooperation between the two nations' private sectors. He reviewed with the Ambassador a number of areas that will strengthen bilateral cooperation, wishing the Ambassador success in his diplomatic duties. The Indonesian ambassador commended the efforts of His Royal Highness in enhancing cooperation between the two countries, noting the development of bilateral relations across all sectors. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa today received the newly appointed Jordanian Ambassador to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Rami Erekat, at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness underlined the growing ties between Bahrain and Jordan across various spheres, highlighting that His Majesty King Hamid and King Abdullah II of Jordan continue to support bilateral efforts to achieve shared strategic goals, including strengthening intra-Arab relations and addressing current regional challenges. The meeting also included discussions relating to recent international and regional developments. His Royal Highness extended his best wishes to the new ambassador and wished him success in his new diplomatic role. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today received the British Ambassador to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Simon Martin, at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness reaffirmed the strong ties between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Kingdom, which span over two centuries and are founded on extensive bilateral collaboration across multiple sectors. He expressed his appreciation for the Ambassador's role in the promotion of diplomatic relations between the two kingdoms and highlighted the importance of strengthening bilateral cooperation by advancing ties across the economic, trade and security areas. His Royal Highness and the British Ambassador discussed recent regional and international developments as well as efforts to safeguard regional security and protect the region's long-term interests and sustainable development. The Foreign Ministers of the Kingdom of Bahrain, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and the Arab Republic of Egypt met in Manama regarding the ongoing consultations on the crisis in Qatar and the need to stop their support and funding of terrorism. This is in addition to harbouring those wanted by the respective countries who were involved in terrorism and its funding, the dissemination of hate speeches and incitement and interference in the internal affairs of the countries of the region. The ministers expressed gratitude and appreciation for His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for receiving them, adding that they had looked forward to seeing His Majesty's wise vision to achieve common Arab interests and solidarity between the four countries in all challenges facing them. The foreign ministers reviewed the latest developments regarding the crisis in Qatar and the contacts they have made at the regional and international levels, stressing the continued close coordination amongst them in order to enhance solidarity 
among the four countries support Arab national security and eliminate terrorism to further preserve regional and international peace and security. The four countries affirm the six principles set at the Cairo meeting, which represent an international consensus on the fight against terrorism, extremism and its funding, and rejection of interference in the affairs of other countries. They also affirm the importance of implementing the Riyadh Convention of 2013 and 2014, which have not been implemented by Qatar. The four countries also stress the importance of Qatar's response to the 13 demands made by the four countries in order to combat terrorism and extremism and achieve regional and global security. The four nations expressed their willingness to engage in dialogue with Qatar, provided it declares its sincere and practical desire to stop its support and funding for terrorism and extremism, as well as spread the word of hatred and incitement, and to commit themselves to non-interference in the affairs of other countries, and to implement the 13 just demands that guarantee peace and stability in the region and across the globe. The four nations also stress that all measures taken against Qatar are sovereign and in conformity with international law. They express their appreciation for the role played by the Emir of the State of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Subah Al Ahmed Al Subah, to resolve the crisis of Qatar. The four countries denounced the deliberate intention of the Qatari authorities to obstruct the performance of Hajj rituals for Qatari nationals. In this regard, they commended the facilities provided by the government of the custodian of the two holy mosques to receive the pilgrims. The foreign ministers agreed to continue consultations and coordination regarding this issue in their forthcoming meetings. The Minama meeting of the foreign ministers of Bahrain, Saudi, the UAE and Egypt came to reinforce the quartet's stance against the state of Qatar's continuous support for extremists and its direct and indirect interference in the affairs of the countries of the bloc. The joint statement left the door open for Qatar to engage in dialogue only after it has met the demands set out by the four countries which insist on Qatar's disengagement with terrorists and extremists. In a press conference following the foreign minister's meeting, the countries of the bloc played down Qatar's ambitions of teaming up with Iran in an attempt to fortify its position, stating that Iran would only expedite Qatar's destruction. The rapprochement between Qatar and Iran, and as I said earlier, any country we're dealing with Iran will have really negative consequences uh, for this country. Iranians have only led to uh, destruction, uh, and no country has benefited from cooperating with Iran. I believe our brothers in Qatar, if they uh, believe that they can reap a benefit uh, from dealing with Iran, I don't think uh, they assess uh, things uh, properly. The quartet also objected on Qatar's allegations regarding bans on Qataris from performing the Hajj pilgrimage, stating that the holy ritual is a right for every Muslim and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has always welcomed and catered for the needs of pilgrims. To the uh, uh, sacred side, this is uh, 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 using politics uh, in religious matters. Saudi Arabia is the custodian of the holy mosques, and uh, the, we have the uh, custodian of the holy, the two holy mosques, King uh, uh, Salman. And I believe what our brothers in Qatar try is really uh, misleading, and this is uh, uh, illogical, unacceptable, and we cannot accept that at all. With regard to the reports about the sacred sites, and I believe all my colleagues agree with me on that, this is unacceptable. And if a Qatari official or a Qatari citizen uh, uh, cannot, cannot say such, uh, such things, this comes only from our Iranian enemies. Um, because uh, whoever says this uh, will uh, put his country in this, uh, in this corner. And so the ball is in Qatar's court. Will it continue to harbor terrorists and interfere in the affairs of its neighbors, or will it uphold the values on which the GCC Council was formed? Today's message is clear. The quartet remains adamant in its efforts to combat the support of extremism and terrorism in our region. Hamid Shaban, Bahrain International News. The foreign ministers of Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia and Egypt met in Bahrain today, renewing their call against Qatar's support for terrorism in the region. 
The countries express their readiness to engage in dialogue with Qatar if they meet the set demands. More details in this report now with Yasmin Ibrahim. Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and Egypt began a four-day meeting in Manama, which comes within the framework of what was agreed between the foreign ministers of the four countries during their meeting in Cairo. The foreign ministers of the four countries discussed ways to combat Qatari terrorism in light of the apparent inflexibility of the Doha government, following the six principles and 13 demands made by the anti-terrorism countries to resolve the crisis. <laughs> The four countries have expressed the six uh, principles announced in the Cairo meeting and which uh, represent uh, the international view with regard to combating uh, terrorism and extremism, the financing of terrorism and to stop interference in other countries' own internal for that uh, contrary to international laws and which are in contrary to the implementation of the 2013-2014 Riyadh uh, Accords, which Qatar has not implemented. The main objectives of the meeting discussed the means of joint coordination to stop Qatar's support for extremism and terrorism and to address Qatar's interference in the internal affairs of the region and to change Qatar's policies supporting terrorism. <laughs> The four countries expressed their, have expressed their readiness to uh, uh, have a dialogue with uh, Qatar, provide that uh, Qatar uh, adopts a sincere positive regard to combating terrorism and extremism and the spread of uh, speech of hatred and stop interfering of the internal affairs of other countries and the implementation of the 13 demands that uh, guarantee peace and security in the region and the world. The four countries uh, stress that the measures taken against Qatar uh, are part of the issues of sovereignty and are in line with international law. 25 days have passed since the start of the first meeting of the foreign ministries of the four countries in Cairo, and attempts have not yet produced concrete results. The four countries affirm that supporting terrorism and interfering in internal affairs of the Arab countries is not an issue of bargaining and procrastination. The four-party meeting comes as part of the joint consultation and ongoing coordination to stop terrorism and extremism in the region. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. The eighth group first round competitions of the fifth Khalid bin Hamad Futsal League for youth centres, people with disabilities and girls concluded today under the slogan, hashtag generations meeting. More in this report with Noura Alabasi. Under the patronage of the first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Honorary President of the Bahrain Sports Federation for Disabilities, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the fifth edition of the Khalid bin Hamad League for Youth Centers, People with Disabilities and Girls was launched on the 24th of July and will continue until the 14th of September. Organized by the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs and the Media Office of His Highness Sheikh Khalid, the League aims to discover fresh local talents and improve their abilities. Bahraini youth of local centers and clubs have given an exceptional performance due to the endless support of His Highness to young Bahraini athletes and the sports movement in the kingdom. <laughs> 